Hey guys, Josh Lasputz here and welcome back to another Digimon video. And today I'm going to be showing you guys uh, what I personally think is the most underrated deck in the current BT8 format. Uh, I really want to show this off um, before it ends because you know X2 is just around the, around the corner. And I think this deck is absolutely crazy, I've seen like nobody playing this deck. Uh, and I definitely think it's it's up there, it has a good matchup against like pretty much every deck. Except for Yellow Hybrid, um, which of course is a bit unlucky since it is one of the most popular decks. But even Yellow Hybrid matchup is perfectly winnable. Um, I played this at a local this weekend. Uh, Yellow Hybrid was my only loss. Uh, I lost 2-1 to that. I beat all my other opponents 2-0. Uh, I lost 2-1 to Yellow Hybrid. Uh, because I couldn't like... Uh, I just had really unlucky hands where I like, lacked level 4 to level 5. Because we're playing like a stack deck. Uh, we actually want to build up to level 6. And that level 6 we want to be going up to is uh, Rasamon Fury Mode, and then after that, the regular Rasamon. Uh, I know what you're thinking, crazy, that card sucks, it doesn't, this deck's absolutely insane. It's very similar to Jasmon actually, in the way it plays, uh, in a weird way. Uh, which you might be like saying, well, what, why Jasmon? It's like a DP reduction deck, right? Uh, I, I guess technically it is, but the playstyle I'm using for the deck, which I think uh, is the way to go, definitely isn't. Very good matchup against Imperial Dramon, uh, Armor Rush, uh, pretty much everything except for Yellow Hybrid. A very cool deck, super underrated, super under the radar as well. People won't be knowing what to expect when they're playing against you, which is like a major reason to play the deck, of course. Um, yeah, let's just uh, get into the deck profile. Alright, as always, we are going to be starting with uh, the Digitama cards, which is already going to be a little bit uh, strange, actually, because uh, most people are, of course, used to playing a 4 and 1 lineup of the Digitama, or just 4 of the same ones, but we are actually playing a little bit of a weird split, which is going to be uh, 2 Upamon and a triple of the uh, Pusurumon. Uh, the reason for this is that... Uh, it's just kind of hard to decide which of these is actually better. Like, you do actively work towards the uh, true or less uh, security game plan, which makes Upamon really good, but Pusurumon uh, really uh, enables you to hit that threshold of uh, 13k or 19k or like whatever threshold you might want to hit with some of the Digiburst effects. Uh, Rasamon, <laughs> mostly, of course, um, which is actually relevant. I would say this format, like there's definitely 13k cards like uh, Fighter Mode and uh, Massimon, which you sometimes do want to uh, get rid of via the Digiburst of Rasamon, and you really need the Psurumon to, uh, to hit that. Like a 3 Upamon 2 Psurumon split might as well be, uh, be good, it's just, it's really hard uh, to decide which situation might come up more often where one of these Digitama is good. Of course, it's more of a consistency card in this. Helps you deal with uh, problems, but as you'll see, we'll, we're playing like quite a lot of cards that uh, get us to cards, and I'll talk about why as well. Uh, but yeah, that's the Digitama. Then moving on to uh, the main deck, which is uh, and starting with level trees. We are starting with uh, Harrismon, uh, not four. Four is absolutely not necessary, in my opinion. Um, even three might be kind of reaching, but I mean, this card just looks super cool, right? I absolutely love the artwork on this little guy. Um, and it's also good, as you'll see, we're playing a more Digiburst effect than just uh, Rasamon. We're also playing the level four uh, in the Harrismon line, which is Philmon. So, you know, this definitely comes up. There's like a cool uh, kind of combo or play you can do if you uh, have this and the Philmon and the Stephomon as well. Uh, which I'll uh, talk about when we get uh, to the Stephomon, I guess. But yeah, a tree of the Harrismon. And then another tree of uh, Pulsemon. Uh, obviously just a very good card, just to draw one on play. Doesn't have any uh, inheritable ability. Uh, oh yeah, for those who might not be aware, uh, Harrismon uh, has the inheritable of like when it's uh, Digiburst, you can add it back to your hand. And then... Uh, <laughs> this I should probably also explain is when it's digi burst that you can uh, target one of your opponent's digital one and it gets minus 1000 dp. Um, but yeah, Pulse One, everybody is probably familiar with this. Just draw one card on play. If you have three or more, if you have three or fewer, you gain one memory, so it's basically two to play. 
uh, yeah, just uh, just good draw is very important because you really want to set up to like your big uh, your big combo with the fury mode. Uh, then I'm also playing two Starmons, uh, just a little bit of board control. Uh, you are playing the D DP reduction game with quite a few of your cards, and this just uh, sometimes can definitely uh, get you exactly to the number you need to reduce to actually get rid of your opponent's threats. Uh, but two is fine, like the DP, DP reduction is actually not, not one of the main parts of your deck. Um, yeah, and then uh, the only four of level you're playing is actually Lobmon. Uh, this card, it's just the best one in this deck. Uh, Rasamon has the, uh, how do you say it, like the ability that basically its distribution cost is equal to how many security cards you have. So the fewer you have, the better, and Lobmon helps with this in a really good way where it's also an extra, extra card. Basically, on play, it's a plus two. And again, you really want to dig to your combo. Basically, uh, the deck is kind of similar to Jasmon in a way, where you really want to go for like that one big push. And um, Lobon helps you get to that push and you'll see that a lot of the cards we're playing are actually just also to slow down your opponent so you actually have the time to get to that push. Um, but yeah, Lobon absolutely insane. And then this is going to be a little bit weird, but I played one cute mon and one Padamon. Um, the cute one everybody knows and this Padamon is the one that says once per turn when opponents did once lead by dropping to 0 DP, gain 1 memory. Uh, honestly, as weird as it may sound, uh, if you're not familiar with this deck, this almost never comes up. The card isn't that uh, good. You do occasionally, of course, go for the Rassamon uh, if you try to control the game. Or like, you know, with the Starmons. And as you'll see, we're playing some more DP reduction cards. But they're not the main objective of the deck. And if you're going for the Rassamon without going for the big push, uh, that's not like what you want to be doing. Um, but yeah, honestly, this should probably just be the second cute mon. But at the local, uh, I played. Uh, we had a side deck, so I was signing more cute mon. And I also just, uh, I always just side out the Panamon for the cute mon. Uh, in the relevant matchups, uh, it's still good though. Like it has its applications. It definitely there were times where it came up, but um, it's not as broken as you might think it is. Um, like I said, if you're not familiar with what the deck actually is going for, then move on to the level fours. We're playing the full place of Panamon. Uh, mostly just because it's one to evolve, which is, uh, you know, it's cheap, it's good. And then also, people are really not respecting blockers because they're not, you know, they're just not in the format at all. And this card just, once again, you really just want to slow down your opponent. And this card does a great job at doing that. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't play less of this, just uh, a very good card. And then I'm playing uh, three of the film one. Uh, I would play... Um, no, I wouldn't play more at all. The tree is actually uh, perfect. If anything, I would cut down on it. I actually, at the local, um, I did play two film and one rapid mon, but rapid mon actually just never really came up uh, in a good way anyway. So I just decided to go back to this. Uh, it says uh, Digi Burst 2, and give one of your opponents a security attack minus 2. Uh, but which is uh, again it just helps you sl to slow down your opponent but a really good thing about this is uh, if you combine it with Harris Mon and uh, you're going to evolve into Stefan Mon which I'll slow show in a bit um, it generates a lot of advantage but I'll uh, get to that when I get to the Stefan Mon then I'm playing double uh, Kazemon uh, once again in your big push turn you'll see we're playing like uh, quite a bit of Tamers we're playing 6 which is uh, I think you know for a non-hybrid deck it's quite a lot so you usually do have a Tamer set up and uh, you really want to go for the big push and Kazumon just helps you close out the game and, and it did like uh, multiple times so that's nice and then we're playing uh, to round out the level 4 triple of the Akiamon which is the one that's uh, basically just red sting one says if you have a yellow digital one to play you can play for uh, uh, you can reduce the play cost by one uh, I'm not playing four you know we're not our main goal is not to turn out Sylphium or anything we are playing Sylphium obviously you know um, but I think 3 is just fine, it's also not all of your level uh, 5 can evolve over this because I am playing Stefan which I think uh, should be included in the deck. You can make the choice to just not play it I guess and I I think like the one or two lists I saw online of this deck they did not play it but I think it's absolutely mandatory. Uh, and again it can't evolve over this so that's a little bit problematic. Uh, what is cool though is like this inheritable says if you have your yellow digital in play when you attack you can leave one of your opponents Digimon with 5000 DP or less and sometimes in combination with Silphamon this can just clear entire fields which is uh, kind of kind of crazy uh, but yeah that's the uh, the level 4 lineup 12 which is a very nice number in my opinion 
Then moving on to level 5, uh, there he is, Stefan. So it's when Digimon ability is a little bit weird, I would say. It's if this Digimon has one Digivolution card, uh, you can play place up to two level 4 or lower yellow Digimon uh, in its Digivolution uh, cards, and then for each you can draw a card, so basically the play you want to be doing with this is, uh, let's see, we have the our boy Harrismon and then uh, Stefanmon. What you can basically do, so if you have like, uh, let's say you have this deck, right? You go Stefanmon, give one of your opponents Digimon security uh, attack minus two, this goes back to the hand. And then you evolve into Stephamon and use Stephamon ability to attach uh, this the same Harrismon and then uh, just any other level 4 or lower yellow Digimon. And you can draw two cards and it just... Uh, it generates a lot of card advantage. Which, uh, again, I cannot stress enough. Is uh, it's, it's just very important in this deck. You really need that card advantage. Uh, but the real reason we're playing this, because that effect of it just doesn't always come up, is the uh, Inheritable. Which says, when this card is stressed due to activating a Digimon's Digiburst, Rasenmon of course, one of your Digimon gains security deck plus one. Which, um, yeah, it just helps you with the enormous push. It really, uh, sometimes your Rasenmon on its own can get rid of four of your opponent's security, which is... Uh, I shouldn't have to explain too much, it's just very, very good. Uh, but yeah, three of this, and then also three Sylphimon. Once again, this card is just in the deck to control the game state until you can go for your big push, but this... This card definitely puts in crazy amounts of work, uh, like when you go for the DNA Digivolve, it can get rid of a Digimon with uh, 10,000 DP because you can reduce by 5 and then delete one with 5 or lower. And then if there's still like other Digimon on the field with the Inheritable of uh, Akiamon for example, or with its own Inheritable, like it grants to uh, the Rasamon. On top of which you can start clearing your opponent's field. Uh, yeah, card's very, very good. It's definitely better than Cameramon in this deck uh, anyway. And it definitely uh, it does put in the work. And then the last two we're playing are actually Double Rice Graymon, the red one. Which uh, has a Digiburst ability, so you know there's synergy with uh, Steffel, or not Steffelmon, uh, with uh, Harrismon. Um, and as you'll see, we're playing like six Tamers, which you can play with this guy. Uh, the Inheritable effect is very, very good. And the cool thing about this is that it can actually evolve over the Akiamon. Um, which makes it relevant, so the Akiamon is uh, slightly better because you have 5 level 5 to uh, Digivolve over it. Uh, but you have 8 level 5, um, which I think is the minimum in a deck like this. Uh, very happy with this lineup, I really wouldn't change it. Uh, definitely this better than Cameramon. I did consider playing the yellow Rice Grey one, but again, just the same with the Akiamon is very good. And um, you know the Digiburst is cool, the Inheritable is actually more likely to come up because you are not super likely to have 3 Tamers in play. Uh, even though the yellow one would help with making the bigger push even bigger. Uh, but yeah. And then moving on to the level 6s, which are the last, we're not playing any level 7, so we're just playing uh, Rasenmon, and then we're also playing Rasenmon. Um, so I'll just get into these for those who are unfamiliar. Uh, Fury Mode, very, very cool, you can evolve it over a level or a yellow or a purple. And um, it says, end of your turn, you have to trash the top card for your security stack, which is not very good, so you're never gonna be one to, uh, you never want to evolve into this. Um, and not, if you don't have access to this, which is, we're playing, which is why we're not playing four of it. Uh, but the relevant effect is, uh, at the end of your attack, you can re uh, evolve this into Rasamon for free. And then the cool thing about it, if you have done that, you can Digiburst it and then trigger the Digiburst in Heritage Watches. Uh, when this card is trashed as a distribution card by Rasamon's effect, uh, you can unsuspend one of your opponents, or sorry, one of your Digimon, and it gets 3000 DP, which is very, very, very relevant. Uh, this guy is obviously, it's a big guy, it's 13k, so usually the swing you want to do is um, have a stack with this, and then preferably with um, the Stefanmon. And then you swing, uh, it's 13k, and we're also playing uh, a Tamer, which helps with uh, allowing this to survive. But yeah, 13k, which is big, it runs over most of the cards in the current form, it's just a Mastemon, um, Fighter Mode, and I guess hypothetically any level uh, level 7s are actually equally as big or bigger than this. Um, but yeah, you want to go Swing, Evolve into the Rasenmon, uh, then use Rasenmon's effect, Digiburst, uh, you can unsuspend it, it gains 3000 DP as well, and Security Attack plus 1, so you can check for another 2 checks, uh, and delete one of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, with Rasamon, uh, you know, at least that's uh, what you want to be going for. Uh, and then uh, the MVP of the deck, uh, I guess this is actually the MVP of the deck, but uh, Rasamon is the actual boss monster. His uh, dissolution cost is equal to how many security cards you have, uh, but if you have zero, it's still one. And then main monster per turn, you can digiburst up to four, 
and then uh, one of your opponents Digimon gets 3000 DP for each card Digimon by this effect. Um, honestly, that doesn't even always come up where you actually delete the opponent's Digimon with that. Uh, you usually just use the trigger this to uh, unsuspend and make it like a big beefy guy. Uh, I want to talk really quick though about uh, the lore behind this Digimon because uh, I thought the cards were very, very cool, very cool artwork, but I wasn't familiar with it. And apparently the story is that um, when uh, Rasamon Fury votes, like he gets uh, control over all his negative emotions and you know he knows how to get um, to get rid of them and then uh, he ev evolves into the actual Rasamon and um, that way he's even stronger which explains why uh, it can evolve into this and then you know it gains the additional DP. Which I thought was uh, was very cool, pretty cool lore behind uh, behind this guy. Uh, but yeah, this is basically just the way you go for game. Um, very cool, and you know if you can't go for game, it is very good at controlling the board. Then that was it for the Digimon for the Tamers. I'm playing double TK, uh, just Memory Tamers, best card in the game, uh, consistency card, and then uh, I'm also playing one Hero, which may seem a bit weird, but you really want your um, Fury mode to survive the check, like this will run over basically anything in the format, but Fury mode might still, uh, you know, actually get deleted. And uh, you know, if you attack, you can just tap this, give it plus 2000, make it 15, or make this 16 uh, after the after the fact, which is just huge. Um, I was really, uh, really happy with this. I thought it was uh, thought it was a good inclusion to recommend playing it. And then I'm also playing uh, TK and Kari because you know, you want to get rid of your own security via Lopmon. Um, and uh, what's it called? Uh, Blinding Ray. And then you know you get a lot of memory, and you can use you know th that large amount of memory to um, uh, go for your big push. And then also the tapping to give minus one thousand. Uh, it definitely does come up. Uh, so yeah, a cool fact about Hero as well is that of course you can um, also play it with the with the Rice Grey Mon since it's a Red Tamer. Uh, but yeah, this card's just insane. Definitely put in the work. Really makes your opponent scared to attack, so you have like all the time to build up. And then uh, double blinding ray. I wish I could play more, to be honest, just because the synergy with the deck is really good. Uh, again, just helps you with the big push or helps you to get to uh, TK Kari range. Um, yeah, this card is amazing. And then the last card I played was actually um, this card. Uh, Qualia Lies Blast. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, again, the cost of this is. Uh, the same as your security stack, but if you have no uh, security cards, it's actually zero, so you play it for free. And basically, it gives one of your opponents a Digimon minus 3000, which is whatever, but it gives your Rasamon security attack plus one. Um, it did come up, I think I OTK'd my uh, yellow hybrid opponent, I think, with uh, with this and like the entire stack, which was cool. However, uh, you could also consider playing like a third blinding ray or maybe yellow memory boost just to control the or to improve the consistency a little bit, which is, I think, uh, important. At this local, we played with Mulligan, so the deck was also built with that in mind. Um, but it could definitely uh, could definitely help, and again, the memory boost also helps with making big push. But yeah, that was uh, the deck. Very, very strong, in my opinion. Alright, guys, that was it. That was the deck that's for my Rasenmon deck. Uh, probably my favorite deck out of BT8, uh, alongside Blackboard Greymon. This deck is just so cool. I never thought it would be so much fun to play and so good, but uh, but it is. Um, so yeah, be sure to let me know what you think about the deck uh, down below. Do you think this is uh, like a very good rogue deck, uh, same as me, or is there like a reason why you why you are not playing this? Uh, probably just because you're not familiar with it, right? Uh, because the deck just didn't get any hype. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what deck you would like to see in the future. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, yada yada. Uh, bye!